All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. Got a little weather coming through, so I apologize for the noise of the rain, but it's a tin roof and that's what we got. Tonight's topic of the video is gonna be the 20 watt Comgro uh, laser head on the Z1, which is Comgro's machine. I've been in communication with Comgro since my first video that I made, uh, offering some suggestions and some approaches at, at correcting some of the issues with the limit switches and that type of thing. Uh, the machine works well with the, uh, the new head. There is some minor adjustments that need to be made. Uh, I've passed this information on to Comgro and I've been told that they're going to address those. But tonight I wanted to show you guys, for those of you that are mechanically inclined and have basic tools that came with your machine, uh, show you a quick fix, easy workaround that you can use until they do address those issues if you have a Z1. And you can have a fully functioning 20 watt Comgro setup complete with limit switches working and everything. And this is a little bit of a redneck engineering, but if it works, guys, don't, you know, don't criticize. So stick around. I'm going to show you what I had to do, kind of walk you through the steps so that you can do the same to yours if you want. And then you'll be able to have a 20 watt Comgro All right, guys. First up, proof of concept. Uh, I want to prove to you that I'm not just I'm not just blowing smoke here, guys. Uh, so the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to send the machine out, and I'm going to send it to the far reaches of the workspace, and just show you how that works. All right. I'm going to go over each of my modifications that I had to make with you, so that you can do these modifications yourself if you want, and uh, you'll be able to use your 20 watt without worried about having any crashes, but have the limit switches to use with it as well. Now, with this machine, even without modifying the limit switches, you can actually go in and change your uh, mode of operation for the machine to current position and just place it in the middle of the workspace, line up the uh, pointer laser with your material and do it that way without modifying anything. If, if you so choose, that's an option. But what I'm showing you now is this machine has working limit switches with the 20 watt module uh, attached. The only thing, the only downside to this is it will, in order to make everything work the way that I've got this one working, it is going to limit the size of your workspace to 360 by 360 because you have to allow for the size of the module to avoid crashes in the top corner. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start off. I'm going to home the machine. Uh, this is with the limit switches, and like I said, when I first got this thing, uh, I don't know if you saw the video or not, but it, it wasn't home because the limit switches would not detect the limits and it would crash. So I did some minor modifications, and as you can tell, I now have a working home switch. So my limit switches are working, and I'm going to go, don't panic guys, later in the video, I'm going to pull this thing out of here once I show you how well everything works. And uh, I'm going to show you the exact modifications that I had to make. And you really need nothing more than a small block of wood and some Allen wrenches that came with the machine and some type of small wood screw. And yes, I understand this is a bit of a redneck patch, but until Comgro starts including the necessary items to do this with the package, this will get you by and this will make it work. And it will work with limit switches if you're like me and you're a stickler for having limit switches. So what I'm going to do to start with, guys, I'm going to throw a burn out here in the workspace. And I'm going to go ahead and just show you what this machine is capable of. Uh, we went over this before, so I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on the, uh, the workability of the machine. But, but I do want to kind of give you a little insight into it. So I'm going to go in here and check my device settings. Uh, another thing that I'm going to do also I'm gonna change my return to location because of the modification to the workspace. My return to location is gonna be X25 and Y350. Uh, that's gonna keep me off of my 360 by 360 limit that I've got set and allow uh, my, my machine to return up there so that it clears, it de declutters my workspace. So I'm gonna go ahead and frame this out. I haven't focused the machine yet. So I'm gonna to have to do that before we go with the burn. Once I get it over my workpiece, 
I'm gonna flip the little leg out, drop the machine down, tighten the focus up, and we're good to go. So all this is is my logo, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit start on this guy. Now I'm running these power settings. Uh, this may be a little dark because I'm only running it at 110 uh, millimeters per second, 100% output. So it's 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 going to be a very dark engraver, should be with this 20 watt module. Uh, this is the same exact module that I've been running on my OL my LM3. So if you watch those videos, that is this exact module. I took it off of the OLM3 and put it back on the Z1 for this video just to kind of show you guys a workaround and try to work with Comgrow on coming up with uh, spreading the word on overcoming the limitations of the add-on until they can get around to a more uh, uh, suitable fix, which I I've got the sneaking suspicion they're gonna steal my idea. Once this burn completes, the machine should go back up into the top left corner. I've got that location set as my return to location. With any of these front uh, homing machines, I like to do that to kind of get it out of the way and uh, get it away from the workspace. And with the lid open on my enclosure, we will be having some smoke. All right, guys, it's finishing up on the engrave. Once it finishes the engrave, it is gonna go up to the top left corner. And that is my park location that I use on my machines to kind of get the machine back out of the way. Uh, when it does that, we're gonna just kind of show you how this machine functions, all right? It's now doing the uh, cut to cut this piece out. This cut's being done at six millimeters per second at 100% output. Uh, that's pretty much what I run on almost all of my cutting, regardless of whether it's a 10 or a 20 watt machine. The only difference is the number of passes. With the 20 watts, I just set it for one pass. Uh, and what I'm gonna do now, guys, is I'm gonna take that circle just to demonstrate the accuracy of this machine. I'm gonna take that circle and I'm gonna move it out and we're gonna run out, cut it, let it go back over here. And then I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna kind of bounce it around just to show that even with this modification, the machine is still maintaining a really good level of accuracy for engraving. So I'm gonna take my little circle and I'm gonna move it up in the top right corner over there. And I'm gonna go ahead and send that out and burn it. This is just gonna be a line. This is just a, a little pencil line. This is not gonna be a cut just for the sake of time. All right, it returns to my, my parking location. All right, I'm gonna send it back out again. And all I'm doing is just showing you the repeatability of with this configuration, with this module, with this machine, if you run the settings, you can actually go out. And if this were a jig or if this were something that you know, maybe you engraved it and the engrave wasn't as dark as you wanted it. You could actually, if you use these settings, you can run it back out there and run that same burn without having to worry about, are you gonna hit the correct location or not? And as you can see, it's hitting the same line every time. All right, now I'm going to home the machine. And like I said, before I did my modifications, the limit switches would not work. The module would come over, it would grind, and just sit there shuddering and cause utter panic. But I've done some adjustments and some modifications to the limit switches, and now we have a successful home. Now I'm gonna launch that, run it back out from the home location and see how it does. There you go, guys, same line. That is what I look for in a machine, and I'm gonna be honest with you, when I first got this module, I was a little, uh, I, I was a little perturbed that I lost my limit switches. And like I said, I've been going back and forth with Comgro. I've made some suggestions on modifications to the machine, parts that should be shipped with the module to correct this issue. And I have been told that the engineers are working on doing this. So one more time, I'm gonna send that same burn out from my return to location. Machine is gonna return back to there. Gonna run it to the home location. All 
All right, I'm gonna send the and I'm gonna send the burn back out. So guys, that's it for the moment. Uh, I'm gonna call that success in engineering. All right, so that I can uh, make sure everybody understands how to do this and uh, the steps necessary, I wanna go ahead and I'm gonna start right now. I'm gonna go over every step that you need to do. I'm gonna start out with the computer side of it. Uh, if you're not gonna be running the, uh, if you're not modifying the limit switches like I did, you're gonna wanna run this thing in current position. And in doing so, you're gonna change that down in light burn in the lower right corner of your point of origin, change it to current position, and then you're gonna to wanna to put the dot either in the center of your graphic, which is that little, it kinda of looks like a dice down there. It's got like nine little dots. You're gonna to wanna to put that, th that dot in the center, and that way you can mark the center of your, your workpiece and know that your work will be in that area from starting there. That's one workaround. But if you want your limit switches back and you want to be able to rehome the machine, you want to not have to worry about turning off the home and all that kind of thing, you can do the clack shack modification to your Comgro, and the only thing that's going to hurt is you're going to lose a little bit of your workspace. And what you've got to do is go into Lightburn. What you're going to do is you're going to, go to, you're going to go to File, go to Device Settings, and in those settings, I've got my width and height set to 360 by 360. Now. You lose about 40 millimeters of, of, of space. That's, it's basically you're losing 20 millimeters all the way around the machine. And the way that I came up with that amount is my little cheats that I use on the limit switches. That's the length of those guys. And so obviously if I needed 20 additional millimeters to trip those limit switches, then that's how much I've shrank the workspace. It's working, you saw it, it functions. So I think that's a good number to use. It's easy to remember and it's a good round number. The next step is going to be a little more in-depth. It's going to require a couple of Allen wrenches. So I'm going to take the, the Comgro Z1. I'm going to move it out of the enclosure. Right, guys, change of plan. I decided it'd be easier for me to bring the Comgro up here to you guys than to go take you down there. So what I'm going to show you here is on your Comgro Z1, there's your, uh, your limit switch right there. Okay, it's got a little wire on there. There's a screw that is under the under the bottom of the plug right there there's a screw if you loosen that screw that will allow this limit switch to slide this was a pretty good thought on their part because this limit switch is technically adjustable by that so all you've really got to do for for this axis is you'll take unplug unplug this guy and you'll expose you'll expose the screw right here take that screw and loosen that screw what you're going to want to do is bring the head towards this end of the chassis is you want the limit switch to trigger before the head strikes the chassis. What I did is I took a piece of 4.5 millimeter Luon and put it between the module and the chassis, let it kind of hang on its own weight, and then I moved the limit switch up to the point to where it contacted that wheel which actually causes the limit switch to be contacted before it hits the chassis. And then once you get it up to where it needs to be, tighten the screw back down and take your little cable here. And they've got a pretty good bit of slack in this cable. And so you just plug this cable back into the uh, limit switch. And that adjustment is done. Once you move that, and it's about 20 millimeters that you're gonna have to move it. But the easy way, like I said, take you a piece of material, put it in this crack between the module and the chassis and then just slide the limit switch up until it touches this wheel and you're good to go. You don't want to, you don't want to use up the whole 4.5 millimeters because you're losing space when you do that. But that's the fix on that side, guys. And here's the other limit switches, or the other limit switch right here, guys. My solution to this, uh, this problem was that as the head moved over, the frame would impact right here. You can see the head <coughs> impacted the frame by way of the adjustment knob right here prior to the limit switch being activated. So the way I overcame that is I got me a little piece of, of uh, wood right here. It's just a square piece of wood, some of my scrap off of a stove cover. And there's actually a screw hole already in the Z1 right here. So what you do is just cut your little piece of wood. There is a screw under here that you have to get above to, uh, keep, to get it to lay flat. But just take your little piece of wood and uh, you put a screw through this hole that's already existing so you don't have to drill any holes or anything. 
into your little block of wood. And when you do, what that allows, if you watch, is the limit switch contacts the piece of wood before the head hits the frame. And limit switches work, no crashing, no grinding. So, that's the redneck way of getting the Z1 back operational. I have sent messages to Comgrow and I've told them this is an easy fix. A small, just a little plastic cube the size of this material, of this piece of wood right here that I have built. I mean, just, just, a, just a, a, I mean, it could be any kind of plastic with one hole in it and one screw, just a little small wood screw or some type of self-drilling screw, and, and it's done. Uh, the one switch is adjustable. The other one, all you need is a screw and a little block of wood, piece of plastic. I mean, guys, the sky's the limit. You guys with 3D printers, you could print up a really nice little uh, little block and put a hole in it, the whole nine yards. I got a wood shop, so I use wood. So 22.5 millimeter wide block of wood. You want 22.5 millimeters of distance between where the hole is, that little piece of metal on the chassis, and the limit switch. So if you could add 22.5 millimeters of space in that gap, you've corrected the issue with that limit switch. And now both the limit switches are working the way that they should and you can use home you can send it out into the workspace the only other step is going to be to shrink your workspace down to get it you know instead of instead of the the, the 400 by 400 you're going to have to shrink that thing down to about 360 by 360 because you're losing about 20 millimeters all the way around your workspace so i hope this helps guys uh i hope comgrow i i hope you guys are watching uh i i, I really appreciate uh <laughs> letting me try out the equipment uh, it's really nice of them, and I'm hoping that maybe with this little bit of feedback right here, we can get them to, 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 to go ahead and, and come up with this modification. It's just going to be a few pennies in the box with the machine uh, until they can come up with something a, more, a little more solid and come out with a frame that's intently built for the 20 watt. But like I said, guys, a, a piece of wood that I would have wound, wound up in my fireplace, one little screw that I had in a bin back there, a little tiny uh, wood screw, and a little bit of time with an Allen wrench, a little bit of work at a light burn, and I got this thing going. It's working the way it should. I now have limit switches again, and I'm happy with my Z1. So until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.